Basically, Apollo 13 was a mission that uh, had an unexpected failure, uh, and really there was no plan B to handle the particular situation to get us home. So there was a lot of things done that uh, spoke of innovation by the people on the ground and experts, not just in mission control, but uh, around the country, people that had contract, see the uh, spacecraft and the systems were really built by contractors. Uh, various places around this country and uh, many of them were called and counseled on trying to figure out some of the missing pieces that enable us to get home. I uh, had a similar small, smaller story but about innovation in my burn treatment uh, and mainly done to assure I could get back to flight status after suffering 65 percent burn coverage in an aircraft accident which I did to fly the uh, Space Shuttle Enterprise and again, a few items of innovation we did in making that program at the front end of the space shuttle program very successful, uh, kind of the pathfinder to lead the way for the next 25 years of space shuttle flights. You had a lot of folks that came up to you afterwards to talk to you and, and wanted to meet you, uh, kind of that generation that remembers Apollo 13. What, are, what about the younger generation, uh, people in their, their 20s or, or even younger school kids? Do, do you get the same interaction with them? Uh, not, no, not quite the same because they obviously were too young to be eyewitnesses. Uh, what I found, though, is with school children of uh, all ages and kind of sweet spot in uh, K through 12 is about fourth of fifth grade through 10th grade. That's, I find for myself, is the best ages to uh, speak to children. But they're always very interested in space, in general, in space program in particular, and things that the people have ridden in, be it Apollo or, or space shuttle. So I found a lot of interest, but uh, I don't think they feel as much a part of it as the people who were alive and had witnessed it firsthand. So that's kind of the difference to them. In a way, it's almost like uh, imaginary uh, a little bit. How do you innovate as, a, as an educator now in, in reaching some of these younger audiences? Well, you, your, main, your main theme is not obviously the space program. It, it can be a catalyst, uh, which is one part of a museum I've been working for, the Infinity Museum, connected with the Center Space Center, to, in, to uh, encourage people, not just, uh, first of all, adults, to kind of educate them on benefits of science. And, uh, and what science brings to a lot of things that uh, we deal with in everyday life. But uh, to energize younger people with some sort of interest, should their talent be suited? I mean, we all, everybody's a little different in, in what talent we're blessed with. And the key to really your success and some degree your happiness in life is to find out the way to uh, direct that natural talent you're born with in the right direction toward a profession that obviously you'd then find more enjoyable and likely to be a lot more successful in. And you mentioned Infinity. How has that been going so far? Have you, were you satisfied with the opening and, and how that's been? Uh, well, Infinity, we, we actually opened in April. Uh, the first, I think, four months doubled the attendance that Stenosphere, the previous a uh, small museum on Stennis itself had, a, had gotten in a year. So uh, we've, we've had uh, attendance uh, pretty well as we had hoped. Uh, what we're lacking, though, is the rest of the money to finish the high-tech, uh, state-of-the-art kiosks, digital kiosks, as part of the uh, uh, learning tools, if you will, in both the space gallery, two, two items there, and the Earth Gallery primarily. And uh, with the economic situation, we've really had a hard time with foundations for grants, uh, public or private funding. So it's been very uh, hard to gather. What's needed left is a roughly seven, eight million dollars. Uh, we had a one and a half million dollar design through uh, Schlossberg, a, a designer that Disney, Walt Disney uses uh, to create this new, new design that I mentioned. Uh, on our board of directors, we have Jack Blitch. He's the head of Imagineering for all of Disney. So he was influential in uh, helping us uh, through that to get the design ready. Now we need the money to uh, implement it. 
some of the big stories this year in, in space exploration were the, the Baumgartner skydive, then we've got the Mars rover project. Uh, how do you feel about space exploration right now in the future? It's, it's kind of a, the private industry getting involved. Talk some about that. Well, if, as far as exploration, uh, the private sector is not into exploration. They're providing a service, uh, basically, uh, for instance, getting things to Earth orbit, uh, hopefully eventually to getting people back and forth to Earth orbit, which we've done lots of times. And uh, to take that mission, if you will, off NASA's hands and allow NASA to participate in programs that, again, cater more to exploration, like the uh, rover you mentioned that landed on Mars. And so that really is NASA's primary mission is research, development, and exploration. So uh, they, the shuttle, uh, at one time, we, it was really hoped it might eventually be able to be handed off. Uh, but it really was uh, very ex expensive and some degree of liability that it just wasn't feasible to turn it off to a private company. Uh, but uh, so that, you know, what's happened is, and I hope they're successful, is to fulfill that. And obviously a problem with that is to some degree is the vehicles that are being built and some have flown and brought cargo up to and cargo back from space station, they do not have anywhere near the capacity that the shuttle could provide as a, for logistics. So it has to be done by more than one. In fact, Europeans have a, a vehicle that has also gone up and docked with station to bring supplies. The Japanese have one. So there's really multiple carriers like that today, none of which have the uh, capacity of the space shuttle that are fulfilling that uh, hole. As yet, none have been able to carry humans, uh, been certified to carry humans, so we're still dependent on the Russian Suyov system to get people up and down. Would you be seeing more space exploration with emerging countries, more cross-country partnerships? Uh, what, what you're asking is what budgets can be derived either from the U.S. and, and alone or in partnership with others and uh, I can't answer that question. You're asking a question for uh, governments to answer. Uh, I think we have uh, uh, economic concerns. I know in Europe, read about all the time, probably in your journal, and uh, U.S. Is, as well to worry about. So I, I'm not sure w how soon uh, a very, very major program that would be very expensive will be hatched in the future. Two more questions. Uh, during the space race of the 20th century, we saw how it influenced uh, a whole variety of technologies, everything from Velcro to Tang. I mean, there were all these industries that came out, offshoots of that program. Are we, will we see that again ever in, if there was another space exploration uh, boost? Well, uh, you'll see it more from the, uh, when you devise a mission like we had gone to the moon, you really are paying more attention to accomplish that mission. So it's, in a way it's kind of accidental, but you're, you always are pushing technology. Uh, you're trying to do, get the most for the best and trying to successfully achieve this next step. And uh, so it's kind of like a fallout of uh, benefits that uh, by accident end up in private industry. The same thing applies to the Defense Department. When they invent a new system, uh, with new innovations and in the products they build, be it aircraft or, or space uh, vehicles, there's a similar thing of the technology that's developed for this purpose, for that vehicle, can apply, be applied in a commercial sense. But you don't, you don't, NASA or Defense doesn't naturally do their missions to provide, that's not in their minds to provide that, it comes about as a byproduct. And then finally, the space shuttle was officially retired this year. It's in the museum now. L look back on that and tell me your thoughts about that and being a part of that. Well, I, I feel uh, actually more affinity for shuttle program than I did for Apollo. Uh, I was more uh, involved in all through the early design phase and then got to fly the very first shuttle that flew Enterprise on five flights. So I feel much more, and when I want to look at a shuttle, I can see the shape and configuration of the windows, uh, instrument panel, things like that that I can say I not personally designed but was very much a part of a group of people who did that design. So I, I feel more uh, that way involved with the uh, shuttle. Uh, the only thing I regret, uh, and incidentally to me it was very successful in spite we lost two vehicles, which really you could say if you look back, and they did look back through accident investigations, 
uh, could have probably been prevented. But nevertheless, uh, it was highly successful, flew over 100 flights. And uh, the one thing we missed the mark on was the expense. It was too costly a vehicle because our original plan also involved flying more flights per year to lay, lay that cost over the fixed overhead. So that did not, we didn't fly that many flights as planned, like 24 at one time we thought. Uh, so you couldn't shed that cost over the overhead. So the cost per flight went up. But basically I wish uh, what we had done, this country had done, was to uh, set in place the next generation of whatever it be. Redesign of this shuttle, more modernization of Kennedy that would allow more automation in the process. Uh, a big uh, part of the uh, recurring cost of a launch system or an airliner or anything that flies many flights is your payroll. Uh, now obviously fuel price, uh, in case of airlines, directly impact their operating costs. But truly in a thing like a space shuttle, it isn't it, that large amount of hydrogen and oxygen you put in the tanks, it's the payroll. So really you've got to build the next system with that in mind of the, how to envision to do it with less people. And uh, that, that is the other side than flying more flights of getting the cost per flight down.